Hello and welcome to all keepers. Parado Keepers, Light Chip Pilots, 8th Wall Advertisers, and our beloved Explorers and Wayfinders. Thank you for choosing the Wayspotters podcast. Wayspotters is brought to you by the good people at the Pokemon Professor Network. Today is Friday, August 25th, and we are back after GoFest. Fresh, rested, and ready to go. And speaking of GoFest and New York, with me as always is Jamal. How's it going, Jamal? Hey, man. How are you? I am great. Lost I am doing... Of days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I came home and kind of crashed. New York was awesome. Big shout out oh, to the Big Apple and um, all the people that showed us lots of love and respect there. It was it was a great time, and we got a lot to talk about, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. Um, before we get into that, let's go through the news. Oh, we have news. Okay, hold on a second. We have news. And now, the latest Niantic news from the Wayspotters podcast, presented by the Pokemon Professor Network. All right, so there have been reports that the coal bots, the the new AI that Niantic is using to weed out the coal, is rejecting stuff super quickly. So I just wanted to, to mention it to everybody. So be mindful if you're in an area that you don't necessarily get resolutions pretty quick and you're used to having a couple of days to go in and edit your nominations, like your description and your supporting information, make sure you're doing it like really quickly, like the same day or, or putting it on hold and doing it later. Because there were some threads on the forum that people were just like, I don't, I don't understand. I usually have like a month or two, but this got automatically rejected. And people were asking, well, what was your description? It's like, oh, it was a bunch of gibberish. Mm -hmm. That's why you're, that's why it got rejected. I had, I had that happen to me. Remember with my couple, I had that happen and I was like, what's going on here? And then I realized, right, oh, yeah. I didn't go in there. Yeah. That was like right when it first started. And I'm like, okay, yeah. now I know. Yeah. I've gone back in and I've sent those in. Uh, I talked to Kate, the cons about that. And the one that I sent in that, she did the same thing, and she got hers approved, the mural. And then I went yes. back and I resubmitted my mural. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. Nice, nice. Yeah. I don't think that it's rejecting before, like, your but period of time after you nominate something before it actually is eligible to go into voting. I don't think it's rejecting in there. But just to be sure, you might want to go in and immediately put stuff on hold. Yes. Um, next, we mentioned... We mentioned this last week, but I wanted to mention it again, just so it gets out there to as many people as possible. But the Niantic Wayfarer team, there was a thread in the forums about that abuse in the Netherlands. And we did a whole show on it. Um, mm -hmm. Sure did. They have Hamlet. removed. Yes, yes, you were. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Um, they removed a thousand way spots from the Netherlands that were considered abuse and dealt with it. It didn't give us an actual number of wayfinders that they dealt with but a thousand way spots is a lot so kudos to the wayfair team. really is yeah kudos to the wayfair team we're going to talk about them a little bit later on the show aren't we yes we are because we had a chance wow. to meet with some of them yeah um last thing inclusion rules are not a reason for abuse i wanted to bring this one up because it was on the forums too um somebody <laughs> posted Hey, a bunch of my legitimate way spots got removed. And then they hit to Garen was like, uh, legitimate, sure. How they got there, no. Right. Um, so uh, skirting the inclusion rules is not an excuse to abuse the system. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave that at that. Yep, leave that there. All right. On to topic number one. I wanted to... Yeah, what, do, what do you got for us this week? I'm excited to hear what topic number one is. Let's see. I want to talk about New York. And I want to talk okay. about kind of our experience in New York and and the people that we got to meet and just uh, go fest in general. I know this is a Wayfarer podcast, so we're not going to talk too, too much about actually go fest itself, but, you know, stay with us. It'll, it'll pay off in the end. Try, trust me. Jamal and I wanted to give a big shout out to everybody that we met during our weekend in New York City. The the amount of people who stopped to kind of say, hey, you're the wise spotters, um, just to chat with us, take a picture. A couple of people asked for an autograph um, while we were out and about in the park and in the city was 
I don't know about you, Jamal, but it was humbling. It was very, very humbling for me. Um, talking with everybody about Wayfair and, and our podcast was just a truly amazing experience that I, I did not expect it to be that overwhelming and humbling, honestly. I was blown away by the yeah. amount of people that recognized us and thanked us for our work and, and told us that because of you know listening to our podcast that they were able to get better at being explorers and wayfinders um so humbling to hear that like i don't even know how to put it into words i've been thinking about that since uh we left new york and the pictures and the autographs i mean it just it just blew me away i just want to give a quick thank you like i said to new york but to all the people who listen to the show and more importantly to the people that watch the show we haven't been doing a video podcast that long and i really yeah. think it's making a difference you know we 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 said video was going to be the wave of the future and when chris when you came onto the podcast you know we told people we we're going to change things up we we're going to do things a little bit differently and i think it's making a big difference because had we had not had the video portion of the podcast people wouldn't have recognized our pretty faces to come in and, and say hi to us so um i i'm just blown away i never expected people to put us in the category with some of the other really popular co content creators and said, we met you or you met them and we met them and we met them. And I remember looking at you going, they're putting us in the category with these <laughs> people who've been for six, seven years. And we've been at this, yeah. you know, less than two. Um, that was amazing. And it just kind of reinvigorates my spirit uh, to get ready and to have it be a lot better by the time next year's go fest comes around. Yeah, absolutely. And it was, and I think this, I just, I guess, see, I'm struggling for words even now. And I've been thinking about this for a week. Um, yeah. Just to have somebody walk up to you and be like, hey, thank you for, for this thing that you're doing. It's, it's changed how I do my life. Right. And it's just like, holy crap. I don't, yeah. I don't think that we necessarily take this for granted, but I don't think that we necessarily appreciated the reach that we have and having someone walk up to you because they recognized your face is just it's a bizarre experience and i think the first couple of times if you were the first one of the first like three or four people that, that did to us and we looked at you really weird i'm sorry um <laughs> right. we're not used i don't to this. think that we knew <laughs> right we knew what to say <laughs> So. And by the end of the weekend, I'm like, yes, hold on. Let me get my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever get used to it fully. Yeah. But I think by the end of the weekend, it was like, okay, I recognize that this is a thing that's going to happen. And I need to be <laughs> mentally prepared for it. I just um, didn't expect it to happen in the middle of Bryant Park. Maybe it go fest. Yeah. On Randall's Island, we're just kind of chilling, drinking a, a, a iced uh, soy latte in Bryant Park, and someone's like, "Hey, you're Chris," and you look, and it's like, "Hey, you're Jamal." I'm like, "I, I am. I'm not even wearing the shirt yeah. with my face on it." And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like when when we split up that one point when um you were at the the Lego store, I was just like in the middle of downtown New York, and someone was like, "Hey, I recognized you," and I was just. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah that's no, it was... so awesome. You're so, just over there thank trying to you take to some everybody. pictures for your wife and kids, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was cool though. Like, it's I don't mind. It's if if you're ever out and about, and you happen to see me or, or Jamal, then absolutely come over, say hi. We don't, we love it, hundred percent. Yeah, I know. It was amazing. Like, I, I kept messaging my wife, and I'm like, I don't think that I will ever get tired of this. <laughs> Right. So my ego's Obviously. gotta go. Boop, boop, boop. My wife's like, this is the last thing you need. This is the last thing your, <laughs> your ego needs. It's just for people in the street to start recognizing you. Right. In New York City. <laughs> in New York City, yeah. Just fantastic. Just yeah. fantastic. I also wanted to give a big shout out to Ken for arranging the, the New York State of Grind tour after. That was a lot of fun. And it was it was nice that we had something that was organized and we had a path that people could follow us. And there was quite a bit of us. Um, not enough for the New York police department to get called on us, which was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like some, somebody else had, but it was really cool to have that walk and to hang out with, with some people and, and the Patreons and stuff. And huge shout out to Omnisec for, for joining us. It's cause New York is his, his stomping ground. And, 
he streamed while he was walking around with us. So that was really, really cool. Um, yeah, even the, the stuff that he was kind of like, hey, that's this, and then that's this. It was like having our own little personal tour guide through Central Park. Tour guide. Really cool. Yeah, shout out to Omni. Omni is great. <clears throat> I hadn't had a chance to meet him prior to this. And by the time we left New York, I really felt like he was part of the family or I was part of his mm -hmm. extended family. And the cool thing is they gave me one of their their energies um, that I've been wearing. And uh, nice. it, was, it was really cool. So let me let me start with Ken. Ken Pescatore is the man, right? He he's he's from Jersey and he's got a lot of connections in New York City. And he really put us on the path and set us up for success. So we walked from Randall's Island all the way down through Central Park and Ken had something set up everywhere. He had locals there to meet us. And um, aside from just the uh, the the New York State of Grind, walking, wafu, whatever we want to call it, just all the support he's given you and I over the last mm -hmm. few months through GoFest is just amazing. So big shout out to Ken, big shout out to Omni, big shout out to every local in New York City. Really appreciate it. And let me tell you, by the end of the day, my dogs were barking. We walked, <laughs> essentially, Chris, you and I walked from Harlem to Battery Park. And if yeah. you know anything about Manhattan, we walked the entire dang island of Manhattan from, from the top to the bottom. So um, it was it was a it was a yeah. blast. Met a lot of people. Uh, got to see a lot of really cool and interesting way spots, and um, it was just a good time. Yeah, no, it was, and it was it was really cool that it was he set it up so that we could stop and you know we did our raids, but I took a ton of pictures. Right, it was very casual kind of touristy kind of thing that I thought was really really cool. Um, because a lot of us, that was the first time that we'd ever been in New York City. Like for me, it was mm -hmm. the first time I'd ever been there, other than the two layovers I had at LaGuardia. But that doesn't really count. <laughs> so it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, finally, I wanted to thank all the Patreons who joined us on this amazing adventure. Thank you so much for coming with us. Um, it, it really made this whole trip just a truly amazing experience and i know i've only been on on in the group since what, february um but mm -hmm. to put faces to names and to actually hang out and break bread and eat meals and and play play pogo with these people and you and it was just a truly amazing experience and not something that i would ever trade for anything ever um so thank you for joining us it was just amazing yeah so it was the the cool thing is is we had uh three we had three airbnbs between all the patreons for yeah. for the pokemon professor network you know this this journey kind of started a couple years ago in philly when there was eight of us um in the rooftop you know airbnb in philly and then it went to last year in seattle and now this year in new york so three different airbnbs i think we had close to 35, 40 trainers, explorers, wayfinders, yep. people, patrons, friends at this point. Um, and it was great, like you said, to put names with faces. I finally got to meet Sarah Amanda, who I lived like mm -hmm. a couple hundred miles from, but we just could never really get our stuff together. And we met in New York City, you know, um, Trainer Mystic, um, you know, Michael, one of, one of the locals here um, in Charlotte, you know, came with me and we hung out up there. Ad rock, yep. just talking about people in our in our in our specific Airbnb, Havoc Bandit, JC Picks. You know, um, we had uh, Ken with hair, Scipio Blue, and Ivan and um, uh, Ham Taro. Uh, you know, as the Pokeball Turns podcast, and and um, and Lane and his brother. Uh, you know, Good Morning Johto and his brother. I mean, just cool people. And then you have Justin yeah. and Adam and Ken and Justin's fiance Jody. And Maddie G, of course, we can't forget Maddie G, and we can't forget Raber, and I mean all of the guys, and 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 Jen from California, and you know I'm gonna miss somebody, so I don't want to make sure that I yeah. give a shout out to everybody, but just all of the people from the Mojo Dojo Casa House and the New Jersey House, and 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 the other, I mean, just everybody involved. Uh, Agent X, you know, Scott is such a good dude, and he does yeah. content creation. Um, on his own on TikTok, and we want to shout him out. I mean, it was just really just a blessing to have such a great community um, around us that supports us 
and uh you know we support them and the things that they do and it was it was just really cool to all kind of put it together and go and, and play some pokemon go and i think the really cool thing for me chris is all of the people who were kind of wayfarer uh, affiliated we made our mark on new york city i think we did a total yep. of 20 waste spot nominations in and around new york city just from our little group from all over the country and all over the world so you know i'm waiting for mine to see if it's going to go through i hope it does but to everybody, like you said, a big shout out to everybody. And if I, and if I forgot to mention somebody, I'm sorry, I'll get you. Um, but everybody there, I think we got to talk to everybody. We made our appearance at the Queen's house uh, the night before we left mm -hmm. to make sure we got to see everybody there. And it was just so cool. Luis, Pure Lighter Podcast, you know, um, we played some board games together. I mean, it was just an amazing time. So just big shout out to everybody involved. New York City, New York State, Randall's Island, Bryant Park, Central Park. Um, and all the restaurants that we frequented and Target also. We made lots of trips to Target <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. shout out to Uber, shout, shout out to the MTA and the subway. And, and I still got my little Metro card. Just, just a great time. Had a blast. Yeah, exactly. I, if, one tip, if you're ever going to New York City for an extended period of time, buy an unlimited Metro card. Trust me, it will save oh, for sure. Your yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And make um, sure you do it in American funds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, my bank account's been pinging all all the last couple of days with its uh, converting <laughs> all my Canadian trans or the American transactions into yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, it was just so much fun, and you know, I'm glad we got to go out to the Queen's house and, and kind of hang out with that group while they were there and play where words. That was a fun. I got I told my wife that we need to buy where words because that was a lot of fun. Oh, I already bought it. I mean, did you? Nice. Oh, nice. yeah. I already ordered it. I ordered it the next day. It's going to be here today, as a matter of fact, later on tonight, where we're just going to be here. We're going to have family game night. And um, so for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, so we have a channel on the Pokemon Professor Discord. Um, it's a board games channel. And here's my commercial. If you want to join the Pokemon Professor Network, you can join for as little as $1 a month, $1 US a month, $1.34 Canadian, $1.56 Australian. I don't remember what the pounds are, but it's around a buck fifty something pounds, but a dollar a month. And yeah. you get um you get access to all the channels on the Pokemon Professor Network and all the podcasts. And we have a channel on there called Board Games. And Sarah Amanda's kind of the administrator of that channel. And she introduces us to a lot of board games. And we played one in New York City called Where Where Words. And it's really cool. It's hard to describe, but essentially you have everybody in the group. And there's a word you have to guess, and everybody has a different role, whether you're the seer or the or the chairman or the werewolf, and then you've got to figure out who does what and figure out the word. But it's cool. So I bought it. It's going to be here. So um, we're probably going to have a Saturday or Sunday night game night and play where words. Nice. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was good hanging out with everybody, and I just thank you again to everybody for for joining us on that yeah. adventure and. I know, I know that you've had a chance to meet some of them before, like in, in Philly and stuff. But for me, from meeting everybody for the first time was truly an amazing experience. Yeah, Speaking of were, amazing. Yeah, you jumped in and it was just like, oh, this is Chris. It's not like Chris is the new guy from February. It's like Chris has been mm -hmm. here forever and you just picked <laughs> up where we left off. Yeah, no, it was really cool. It was very, very welcoming from everybody. So I really appreciate that. Um, Speaking of welcoming, the last thing I want to talk about from New York is our meeting with Niantic. So we got to sit down and have a chat with Tib and Niantic Avocado, whose in-game username I think was Moira Rose. I told my wife that, and she's yeah. like, oh, I want to be their best friend. She <laughs> loves that. Show. I'm not going to mention the name because it's, if you know, you know. Yeah, if you um, know, you know. Uh, but Tintino was there, and there was a few other people there, but that whole team was just so welcoming. And the fact that every single one of them, like even the ones that, you know, I know Tantino, and I think I recognized Tib, but um, like Anastasia and them were just like, hey, you guys are the Waste Spotters. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, like, hold you, on. This. Wait, you, you know do watch, watch the show. <laughs> yes, you watch it. <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, we can't share a lot about what we talked about, but we can share some stuff. So I want to kind of tread lightly here. 
Mm -hmm. to not kind of tip their hand too too much but i want to say that it was it was a super good meeting that's that whole team is very engaged they're very friendly um and i went into this meeting i said to you this is i said this to you in new york i went into that meeting fully confident that that wayfarer team the nine tick wayfarer team knows their path they they have a good vision for what they want and that Wayfair is in good hands. And I think I left that meeting doubly thinking that, and I did not expect that. Um, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You no, know, we talked about, you brought this up, um, nominations coming to resolution a lot quicker in some areas than, than it does in others. And uh, Tib mentioned that Timbleton, apparently that's how you say that guy's name. So Timbleton. Um, Timbleton, now we know. Posted in the forums um his theory or their theory and Tib was like yeah we're gonna look into it and and so hopefully they have a resolution on that i don't think that's something that's necessarily on their radar for soon mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that they've got on a burner and so which is which is really cool um so i'm hopeful that they can resolve that at some point uh we talked about abuse and they said that they really, really appreciated us dedicating the, the what was it, the two episodes that we did to the abuse mm -hmm. and kind of highlighting back, yeah. the, the work that they're doing and um, and all of that. So they definitely said that they definitely appreciated that, which is nice to hear, um, especially considering we got a little bit of flack for being negative for a couple of episodes, <laughs> um, which I understand that talking about abuse isn't necessarily the most fun topic but it's it's because it was so prevalent in the news and on the forums i we felt that it needed to be talked about and yeah we, we, we had to, to address it, it. Right. yeah we needed to address it um and we got to see a mock-up of the new reviewing ai and i i can't i'm not gonna describe it i'm not gonna kind of talk about it too much because it's still a work in progress um what I can tell you is that it's amazing. I'm in love with it, just yes. from what they they've showed me. Uh, yes. I don't know how you feel about it, but I I thought it was amazing. I um, I want to touch on a couple things, and you don't have to start the timer. But um, just to go back <laughs> to your first point, <laughs> um, just to kind of give my recap. So I have always, you guys know my love and affinity for Tintino. The, the whole first season was dedicated to me, like, finding Tintino and having a conversation <laughs> with him, and we did it. And, you know, I played the little door of the Explorer. We did it thing. So when I saw Tintino, I ran up and gave him a big hug, and, you know, it was like, hey, what's going on? And I uh, saw Tib, and, and, I, and I didn't know Anna, and I didn't mm. know Niantic Avocado. had no idea who they were, how they were, you know, connected to, to, to Wayfair. And when they said, oh, well, we know you, you guys are the Waste Spotters and we want to, you know, talk to you. And I'm like, okay, wow, okay, cool. Um, just for everybody listening right now, these guys are killing it. And I'm not just saying that because we met with them and we talked to them, but like legit of all the Niantic teams, these guys are killing it. Do they have challenges? 100%. Are there areas of opportunity? Absolutely. But through our connections and people we talk to, you know, we, we have uh, access to, to people that work for the company and other people do content creation. This Wayfair team is on the ball. They are, they are ready to go. We are in such good hands, and I'm so charged and energized about the things that they do. And the thing that I love about this Wayfair team after meeting with them is they're self-aware and self-aware enough to know where their areas of opportunity are, and they're mm. actively working on it. Um, and I think the frustration of some of the wayfinders and explorers is they don't say that and they don't tell you what the shortcoming areas are, but they yeah. know what they are and they're working on them and they'll get them fixed. Um, and I think yeah. a lot of us want to know like everything that they're doing and tell me what's going on. And, and, and they got it. You just got to trust us. Like I said, there's some stuff that we can't really go deep, deep, deep into, but they're on it, man. It's, it's, it was mm -hmm. so cool. And a couple of things that we saw gives me like, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for when these things get announced. And and guys, they're listening to you. They are using multiple channels to get feedback from the community 
and they are, you know, uh, like, you know, they're like Chris, they're, they've got a spreadsheet of things that are on the list that they need to work on, they need to fix. And there's a lot of things that they do that, that just kind of go unnoticed, little things that could blow up and they fixed it before it became a problem. So um, yeah. they're doing an amazing job. And Chris, I am so super excited about things that are coming down the pipe. And, you know, we let them know that Chris and I are willing to plug in to the Matrix wherever they they mm-hmm. seem fit and 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 we'll go from there. But um, it was a great meeting we had with Tib and Avocado. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to know that Avocado shares some of my same fears about the forum. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of refreshing <laughs> there. So it's, it's yeah. given me uh, it, it's given me some courage to dip my toes back in the forum. So, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm That's really good. excited. It was it was a good meeting. It was it's, I walked away from that meeting probably more excited than I walked away with any shiny or any hundo that I caught during yes. Fest. Yeah, that was definitely the highlight of the day for sure. And I think one of the one of the big things that Tib touched on while we were talking to them was they want they're approaching all of the changes and all of the things that they do with Wayfair very very carefully, right? Like Niantic has, I want to say a bad reputation, but they have a reputation for kind of maybe rushing things out to the games, right? Like I don't know how many times they've released things into Pogo that were just a hot mess, right? Mm-hmm. Roots. Like, I hate to say it, but Roots is a hot mess. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. At least it was when it first came out. And it's still not even great, right? And it's they have this reputation for just pushing content out and not necessarily QAing it properly. But, like, the Wayfair team is, we're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to get everything that we're going to do, and it's going to be it's gonna be chef's kiss perfect before we release it out to the team, right? And the negative side of that is that when they say hey we're gonna do this and it takes longer than maybe you they they said that it was people get angry right but i think that mm-hmm. people need to people need to appreciate the fact that they're upfront and honest right they're like they even with the the roadmap they're like hey you know we said we were going to do this by a certain date but guys it's just it's not feasible we can't do it and people are just like oh man that sucks and blah 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 it's like, no 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 they can't do it because it's not ready, right? Mm-hmm. They, they had a timeline. They can't meet it. They're being honest with you rather than shoving it out into your face and having it break. And then trust me, you're going to be more upset if they release it broken than if you have to wait an extra couple of months for it to get released fine, right? And that's like the biggest thing for me. And that was really, really refreshing because I sometimes I get nervous when, when it comes to Niantic pushing stuff out that they're going to do this oh you know we said it was september here you go it's september and we'll deal with the stuff that we didn't finish kind of later right that's Mm -hmm. that's not the way to do it and it was really really refreshing to see that they're taking their time with all the changes that they're making so that they're good changes and like in the reviewing ui is just going to be oh i i had goosebumps walking away after looking at it it was so cool Well, Chris, you know, the one thing that I took from the meeting that I had thought, right, and I had hoped for any kind of live service game that they would do is they've got their roadmap, but they're also they also have their ear to the ground and things that rise to the top from the players. They're trying to incorporate that on the fly into the roadmap. So, hey, we've got one, two, three, four that we want to do. But this thing that's like 19, the players are saying, you know, we need to do this and we need to bump this up to three you know, or, or what the case yeah. is. So that was the thing that was cool to hear is that they hear us, you know, um, they hear us, they do. Yep. Um, yep. Like any big company, you can't come out and say, I heard this and I heard this and I heard this because in the 10 other people that said something, they're like, what about us? So they, they hear us They and, and they're making moves that fit within the framework of what they're trying to accomplish overall, but they're putting the mm-hmm. things in there that we need and they're, they're making fixes on that. So that was one of the things that was more encouraging to know that like, we're not just like angry men screaming at a cloud, like the clouds, like winking, like I got you, you know, and then yeah. you know, we're, something's going to happen with that. So that, that part really made me feel good. Like I, I wish 
we could talk about what the new wafer might look like, and it might change from what we saw. Like it might change, yeah. but yeah. if it's anything, if it's anything close to that, this thing is going to be fantastic. And people yeah. who are nominating or obscure people who are reviewing five or six a day, you're going to want to stay in there and do twenty or twenty five or thirty a day. I know I'm going to want to do more, so it's going <laughs> yeah. to be a good move for everybody all the way around. Yeah, yeah. And the, another thing that was, and they mentioned that um, there's a lot of things that they learned from the last challenge that I don't think even we realized that was stuff that they could, you know, and it's, so they're just taking notes on everything and, and using everything that happens to kind of better the, the their experience. Right. And the fact that they, they also mentioned um, our episode on the AMA and how they appreciated our feedback and, and our viewpoint on it. And they really took it to heart. So that was kind of cool. Um, so, yep. And a lot of that comes from, um, you know, follow us on Twitter, guys. Send us messages on Twitter or X mm. or whatever we're calling it these days. Because a lot of the things that we talked about on that episode came from our patrons and came from people who yes. reached out to us and said, hey, I have a question about this. Or can you talk about this? Or can you do some research into that? Chris and I do a lot of work behind the scenes on the show to make sure it sounds as good as it does. But there's a lot of things going on in the community that you all bring up that we kind of bring to the light. So a lot of those things, a lot of the thoughts that I had, a lot of thoughts that Chris had came from people out in the community. So follow us on Twitter, send us an email, let us know what's going on, what you think, and we'll continue to bubble those things up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like we, like we, have, we, we sing their praises, um, but we are not afraid to hold them accountable for, for stuff. Right. So if we did a whole show on that, remember, was it 81? Eight, was it 80 or 81? The whole show was holding no, Niantic oh, accountable. And they appreciated it because they don't yep. want someone to just yep. kind of, you know, run up and wash their feet. They want someone to say, hey, guys, you're messing up. You know, you're messing up. Yep. Like, like legit, like, this is a problem. That, And then that's when we start talking about abuse. Like, like I said, get control of your game. I think I said that three times. Niantic, yep. get control of your game. Crack down on what you need to crack down on because you're going to drive away the legitimate wayfinders who are really upset about this and yep. they look at the game board and they see like 19 POIs in a row and they can't get one through in their local area. So get control of your game. And they are got rid of a thousand. They spots. Absolutely. They are. They, they're doing yep. it. So, yep. Yeah. So kudos to them. Uh, one last thank you to everybody. Uh, we're going to move on to topic number two. Briefly, Ooh, we have before we get into two? dad jokes, the waste spot of the week. I, while we were in New York, like Jamal mentioned earlier, I think we put in like 20 to 25 um, waste spots as a group. And I had a whole bunch of other ones that I wanted to kind of go and investigate. We just didn't have time, um, mm -hmm. which is which is fair. Uh, we had yeah. such a good time that it was <laughs> right. kind of took a back burner, right? But I wanted to give some people some tips on how they could approach going on vacation in an area and finding way spots and finding stuff to nominate while they're on vacation and helping out, especially if you're going into like a, a smaller town, right? If you're going on mm -hmm. <clears throat> that doesn't have a lot of stuff. So the first thing I think is Google car. The Google car is probably the best way to find stuff that's not on the map. So if you, it's a Google car in conjunction with the Intel map is probably your best bet. Um, if you don't have an Ingress account, I recommend waking, making one. So you can pull it up and it will show all the portals that are on the map. It will give you a general idea of what's kind of in the games and what's not. There are some stuff that's in Pogo that's not on the Intel map, but it's pretty rare. Um, depending on the area you're in, it might be more prevalent than, than other areas. Um, so you can just... Check Google, Google Satellite, and you can find parks and baseball diamonds and playgrounds and stuff that's easily viewable from, from satellite view. And then you can check the Intel map to see if they're already in the game. If they're not, then there you go. You got some, right. some easy wins. Yep. Um, you can also, and this is the one of the things that I, I did in New York, was I took the Google car and I kind of drove down downtown to try and see if you can find murals and stuff or plaques that are on buildings, right? So you can just click once, uh, go ahead and go ahead and go ahead. And then you can kind of move the Google car around 
and I, I think I'm saying Google too much. My Google, uh, my Google Home just tried to talk to me. <laughs> I heard that in the background. <laughs> he was like, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. Heard that in the background. That was my Google Home. Um, another thing you can do. Um, Find some local news websites. Sometimes they'll post things saying, hey, we got a new playground that's going in or there's uh, a festival of murals that that's going on or um, there's a new park that's been built, stuff like that. Um, really good uh, resource to try and find some stuff that's newly built that you might be able to get in. Uh, local Facebook groups is a is a huge one right if you've got like a local art group they could point you in the direction of some art installations and murals and stuff like that you can connect with the locals and say hey um i'm coming down i got a bunch of nominations do you guys have anything that you've struggled to get in or you know maybe you don't have enough people in your area nominating stuff like that um really help out that community and the city websites are another good resource because city websites will often listen list all of the parks that are in the area, all of the the murals, points of interest, and stuff like that. And and local discords. Try and get into a Discord in the area. Um, that way, a you can play the game with the people in the area, and b they can probably point you in the right direction. Can I add something to that? So yeah, a absolutely. new wrinkle: campfire. When mm. we were in New York and I opened up yes. Campfire, I got, I had a chance to join a lot of different Campfire groups in New York City of people that were there. So, um, you know, Discord and Campfire can go hand in hand. I don't know, I don't know the adoption rate of Campfire in all areas, but it seemed like there was a lot of Campfire groups in New York. Yes, there was. Yeah, I opened Campfire a couple of times and there was a lot of groups in, in there. And that's an amazing, that's, you're right, that's an excellent resource. I didn't have that on my list. Um, it's just, and honestly, I think the best thing that it's just keeping your eyes open. Like there was stuff that we had no idea. Like we were walking out of uh, the park at Randall's Island after our park experience and boom, we almost walked head first into a map that wasn't on in the game. Right. So I put that one in. Yeah, absolutely. And you put two in right there. I put two in there. Right. Yeah. And then I found yeah. a mural in a, in a restaurant that we were sitting at that wasn't in the game. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to, to put, like, if you see something, chances are that, that maybe somebody else has tried or maybe somebody else hasn't tried, right? The, the, right. A lot, the worst thing they can do is say no, and then you can appeal it and probably get it in an appeal, right? But just keep your eyes open. Um, check around. That was my motto in New York. The, yeah. The worst they can do is say no. That was my motto in New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. all they can do is tell yeah. me no. I'm gonna try it. All they can do is tell me no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I found like four murals in a row at the airport in Ottawa, and I put all of them in. So I got stuff that's going in in Ottawa too. Just because when I was on my layover, oh. I was just walking around the airport, right? Yeah, it's overall it was a good yeah. time. Airports for the most part seem to be pretty filled in. When I was in, I flew out of uh, Newark and just about every cell in the on the intel map seemed to be filled in there was a couple of empty cells and i didn't have a whole lot of time to go like search like i would like to have had mm -hmm. but airports seemed to be good but it was really interesting chris walking around new york city how many empty spots there were for things and yeah. for the most part midtown um central park uh, Times Square, even Uptown a little bit, were all filled in. But when we got down to Lower Manhattan, I was surprised that it was as sparse as it was. And I'm like, I need to come back to uh, to Tribeca and Soho, and I need to go around there and nominate a lot of things over by the bookstore that we were at. Speaking of the bookstore, yes, you should be getting something in the mail soon. Oh, perfect! Thank you so much. I uh... yes. I bought my wife a mug at a bookstore and then I left at the Airbnb when I left in the morning. So it was, I don't know how I forgot it too. It was in a bright yellow bag. It was just sitting right on the table. So, yep. but I got it. I'm going to, um, this weekend, I'm going to go and drop it in the mail. Um, Perfect. FedEx, UPS, I don't know. They'll tell me whichever one delivers to Canada, but um, I'm going to drop it in so you'll have it and everything will be great. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. I like how that played out live on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that man, out well. I do that appreciate that. Well, friend. yeah, I got you. I got you. That's what the Waste Spotters team is all about. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, I think that's good. You got anything else before we go to break? I've got nothing else. I think we've talked Perfect. it all to death. All right. Let's roll the break. We'll play the dad jokes. And then we've got a specially curated waste spot of the week that came up in New York. A little bit of a teaser there. Um, Jamal might not like it, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> All right. We're going to do it anyway. All right. Let's go to break and we'll see you on the other side. Getting paid to sleep? Yep. That's my dream job. Why did the tomato blush? Because it saw the salad dressing. Why did the police arrest the turkey? They suspected them of foul play. Hey, did you hear about the whale that swallowed the clown? Yeah, it felt a little funny afterwards. What do computers eat for a snack? Hmm. Oh, microchips. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you enjoy the dad jokes this week. We're going to roll right into Waste Spot of the Week. And this one comes to us from friend of the show, Sarah Amanda. This is something that... Sarah Amanda put in at the airport in Atlanta on their way up to New York City for GoFest. So it is a civil rights era before mural. Before you go there, Chris, Chris, before yep. you go there, I know what you're doing. You're trolling. <laughs> you're absolutely trolling me. Because everyone who's watching on YouTube, and if you're listening to the audio version of this, go watch the YouTube. <laughs> what you will notice on this way spot in the upper right-hand corner, Sarah Amanda nominated this on August the 17th, 2023. It went in voting on August the 19th, 2023, and it was accepted on August the 20th, 2023. I don't know how this happens. I don't know like how this happens in Canada. It skips over Charlotte and it happens in Atlanta. But I see what you're. This is a great way spot. <laughs> but I'm 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 putting up my protest flag because you're trolling me, and that's okay. I, I'm actually going to go on mute. Go ahead. I'm I'm go ahead. <laughs> so we were hanging out at the um at the New Jersey house, and Sarah Amanda showed me this. And she's like, "I'm going to be able to spin this on my way home," and I was like, "That's pretty cool." And then Jamal kind of threw his hands up, and I'm like, "You need to send me that. That's way spot of the week." So <laughs> it is a it's a civil rights era mural and it's the various photographs from kind of the, the civil rights era and there's a someone holding a sign saying the dream lives and the main photo is a group of people sitting at a table and it's just black and white photos kind of from the the area of between 1946 and 1973. So the title is Civil Rights Era. The description is 1946 to 1973 was the civil rights area. Atlanta played a critical role in the movement as the home of central leaders and organizations. So this is just a bunch of pictures of kind of the leaders and the organizations in the Atlanta area that were fighters for the civil rights and, and big, uh, big players in that whole civil rights area and um, getting uh, the gentlemen, the, the people, the rights that they deserved. Right. So yeah. what are your thoughts on this one? Great. It's, it's, it's a great mural. Um, I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's like, it's probably bigger than what it shows in the picture, but it's powerful. Yep. The black and white makes yeah. it more powerful. And there's a couple of quotes on there and it just shows just, different stages of what happened during the civil rights era mm -hmm. and um you know good educational piece it looks like it might yep. be on one of the moving escalator sidewalk things so you can go by and oh, read yeah, it and look at all the pictures um it, it's it's great it's it's the kind of thing you'd like to see in an airport because it kind of educates you on your way in and out of the city as mm -hmm. to things that go on that's why i love airport nominations because you really yeah. get kind of the feel of the region when you do these things so sarah amanda thanks for sending this in this is great no no smoke to you because it got from nomination to accepted in three days it, it just is what it is and i'm just living that six to eight month life but this yeah. particular nomination is fantastic 
Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like there's a, in front of the mural or, or in front of the pictures, it looks like there's a little bit of like a timeline. Uh, yeah, there too, I noticed so that also. Really, really yep. cool. So yeah, thank you, Sarah Amanda, for sending that uh, that to us. And let's move into Cole of the Week. You want to play the play the song? Oh yeah, let's play the sounder for Cole of the Week. I've been working on the way there all the live long day. I've been working on the way there just to pass the. Uh oh, oh no. Hey, Jamal, I found some coal. So, coal of the week number two. Why don't you take this one? I'll take the next one. All right. So, coal of the week number one comes to us from Lizzie B. Darcy and the Wayfair Discussion Discord. Thank you for sending this in. And this one, um, I'm looking at the picture. And, and the picture, so first of all, let me say this, Chris. The picture and the supporting picture, the picture's good. Let's not talk about what's in the picture first, but let's talk about the picture. It's centered. It's nice. It's got blue sky behind it. The supporting information, there's, it's obviously lets me know that the first picture was taken from a car because we can see mm -hmm. the passenger side rear view mirror. Let's not go there. Let me go to why this is coltastic and colalicious. The title and description, Wanabasi Valley High School Sign. Opened in 1975, named after... Potatami tribe leader Wanabasi. Um, it's a high school, Chris. Yep. And I think it's been well established and well determined that high schools are cold. They're not on the, this is not good. So I just want to reach out and give this person a hug because obviously mm -hmm. they would like a way spot and they saw an empty cell, but, but it's I No, no, don't nominate yeah. high school. And the supporting photo is at district, the district's oh. oldest high school, Wanabasi Valley, is an important part of the lives of many trainers in the Aurora Naperville area. Well, that might be the case. You can't have a POI here because it's K to twelve. It's a high school. So yep, yep. And I think if One you star. really, really look at that picture. You can tell it's kind of faded a little bit, like it's been yeah. taken from behind a window. Like roll, and it's yep. you're right. If had they rolled their window down, that's you a primo notice. picture, right? You know, now that right. I look at it and I kind of look at this person, you can actually see the person in the rearview mirror. It looks yep. like they might have taken this picture through the windshield. If you yep. well, maybe not. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe through the windshield, but then they obviously pulled up and took this from the side. But it's taken from a car. It's, it's yeah. I mean, there's like four things wrong with it. If it was me personally, and I was kind of feeling like a troll, I would go one star submitter submitter identified because I can clearly see the person in the rearview mirror. I would do yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, that is a hundred percent coal. Coal of the week. Call the week. Call the week number two. This ought to be good. Is from oh. Call the week number two comes to us from oh executive our executive producer Kate the Cons. Oh, so thank you, Kate, for signing this. It is a yellow fire hydrant. So first of all, fire hydrant <laughs> blocks emergency <laughs> services. Um, I was waiting for you to say something. You're like, yellow fire hydrant. <laughs> Two, it's not even like, it's not even a painted fire hydrant. Like if it was a, like one of them painted fire hydrants, maybe I could, okay, see why you submitted it, but it's just a plain yellow fire hydrant. Um, three, they misspelled hydrant. And the title is yellow fire hydrant, but they've spelt it H-I-D-R-A-N-T. Hidrant. They misspelled it twice, actually. Yep. And the description is, it was a red hydrant, the, period. It exploded, now it yellow. <laughs> oh, Hickory, North oh. Carolina. You sweet <laughs> yes, summer child. Hickory, North Carolina, <laughs> yep. This is like from my local area. This is about 40, 50 miles north of me. So, oh, Hickory. You got great barbecue Sweet. sauce, but oh, Hickory. <laughs> You sweet summer child. You sweet summer child. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that is definitely cool. Fantastic. 
What else you got for us, Chris? I think that's it. Um, do you have anything that you want to tease or talk about before we uh, sign off? Uh, yeah. Wait, I teased something a couple of weeks ago, and I was supposed to talk about it this episode, and we're going to talk about it on another episode, and I'm going to have to go back and listen to the episode to remember what I was going to tease because I don't have my mm. notebook. I've been forgetting stuff lately. So just so you guys know, I forgot my Wayfair shirt in Charlotte when I went to New York. So I was like, I got there and I'm like, Chris, I don't have my shirt. And he's like, oh, he's like, I got mine. So I was walking around just like not representing at all. And people still recognize <laughs> me. So I guess I didn't need the shirt. But no, no we, got um, not. we are going to, we got a couple different things going here. So a couple things that we want to tease. So we really want to hear from you. So we are going to be collating feedback from you, the listeners, the viewers, and we're going to be playing them on a special show coming up soon. Um, so my invitation to everybody is if you want to hear your voice on the on the podcast, if you want to hear your voice on the YouTube, um, hit us up and we're going to talk about how you can reach us here soon. But we, we've got a few people who are in New York and a few people on the Discord and part of the family who are going to be sending us in some voice messages. And if you are interested in being part of this little special show that we're going to do, reach out to us on socials and we will give you more information on how you can be part of the show. Also want to tease, we are going to be doing a roundtable show sometime in the future where we are going to have patrons and people from our community live on the air on the youtube and on the podcast with us and if you are shouldn't be in part of that editing chris here sorry we had some technical difficulties there and jamal got cut off if you're interested in being part of our roundtable episode hit us up on email or on twitter dm us let us know when we will get you in all right back to the episode all right so i'll go ahead and sign us off uh, thank you for listening to this episode of Waste Spotters. We really appreciate it. A big thank you goes out to our executive producer, Kate the Cons, and all of our patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. If you enjoy what you hear, there are a few ways you can show us. Follow us on our socials at Waste Spotters on Twitter. We are also on Instagram at Waste Spotters Podcast, and we will be far more active on Instagram going forward, I promise. Um, we are on TikTok at I Make Way Spots. We are incredibly responsive. We love interacting with our listeners and our viewers. So reach out, hit us up, DM us, add us. We love it. Uh, second, visit our website, www.wayspotters.com. From there, you can get the links to everywhere you can download the show. You can also send us a message directly from the website or email us at wayspotters at pokemonprofessor.com. Some of you may be watching us on YouTube. Thank you very much. If you are, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, and click the bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. For those of you who are not, be sure to check us out. We post shorts for the dad jokes, waste spot of the week, and both of the calls of the week every week. And more, we are at youtube.com slash at spotters podcast. You can also leave us a voicemail on our hotline. 704-426-3710 or tweet us a voice message. You never know your voicemail or tweet message may appear on an upcoming episode of the show. And finally, if you're not a member of the Pokemon Professor Network Patreon, you can join for as little as $1 US a month. It's $1.34 Canadian. It's All you need to do is go to patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor. You'll have access to the Discord for the entire family of shows across the, the whole network, including Waste Spotters, Special Conditions, Gotta Watch Them All, Purified Podcast, and Lured Up. It's a fantastic place filled with fantastic people, and Jamal and I are active in there all the time. And with that, we look forward to you listening and watching us again next week. Thank you for joining us on Waste Spotters. Remember, it's not that far. Get out of your car.